This is Worldwide Flavor Network. Coast to Coast to Worldwide. The views, information, or opinions expressed in the broadcast of Worldwide Flavor Network are solely those of the individuals involved and does not represent those of Worldwide Flavor Network and Live365.com. Worldwide Flavor Network is not responsible and does not verify for accuracy of the information contained on any live or recorded broadcast available for listening on the site. Tune in daily to WWFN Online Radio, your information, news, and entertainment network. If you are thinking about buying or selling your home, you need to call Paul and Ezekiel at Keller Williams Legacy. That's spelled P-A-U-L-E-N-Z-E-K-I-O. You want an expert you can trust who will be there guiding you every step of the way. My company is the number one real estate company in the Baltimore metro area with the most listings sold. And that is the type of team you want to work with. We are in a seller's market with very low interest rates. Take advantage of this. Call Paul at 410-963-2399 or Google Paul Ezekiel Realty. And remember, that's Paul with a silent E. Right here. Hey, you guys, this is Anika from Anika Tells All. Tune in every Thursday from 10 p.m. to 11 p.m. on Kirk Worldwide Flavor Network. See you then. This show is being sponsored by Worldwide Flavor Network. If you are looking to have your own radio show, come and join us yeah, here on WWFN Online Radio. Contact us via our website, www.worldwideflavornetwork.com. Hey, you guys, welcome to Worldwide Flavor Network, where Nika tells all um, my co hosts. Otis, aka the co hosts. What up? We have two special guests with us here tonight. Hey, real the comedian in the building. Y'all got food for thought, food for thought. And we're going to get all into it. You know, it's an honor to have these two people on here tonight. Absolutely. <laughs> and. Especially the real comedian is a hard person to get along with. You know, oh kind my of goodness. They all in her information. You be like, hey, you see me? It's me. She's busy. She'd be really busy. Bless him, man. And we have um her husband here, and you know, he cook and everything. He's gonna tell us about his cooking. Nice. So. Dude, I got you. I keep the big girl on clink clink. <laughs> <laughs> that's how you keep me going. That's how you keep me going. That's what it is. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I'm joking. Jesus sent them to me, y'all. Jesus oh, sent them to me, man. Okay. Definitely Jesus sent them to me. Um, family member introduced us, but on my way home, I definitely heard a voice. I have a gift of the servant. I have a gift mm. from God of, you know, he just speaks to me, he uses me, and he literally spoke to me and told me that's who that was. And um, so we've been stuck like glue ever since. Like, that's beautiful. Yeah. Got to get this empire now, so that's what we're doing. Hey, working. When you ain't looking, that's when you're going to find it. That's when he finds you. I was single for 30 years before him, so he's my first boyfriend in my whole, whole life. 30 years? Yes. I dated, like, had friends, but, like, that commitment, and, mm -hmm. you know, I was an independent woman. There you go. I ain't yeah. need no man. Now I know I needed a man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Real That's woman. beautiful. So. And just a caveat into that, um, like, the spirituality. And your Breonna Tep. Okay, so let's kind of get into... The post <laughs> and like the show because I, I was just telling you before we came on like that was it, the points that you were making. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh my goodness, like it was really deep. Mm -hmm. And then it like you could you could hear the spirituality, yeah, definitely. and how you speak as well. Definitely. Um, can you just tell us a little bit about like what you do and and uh like the blog and. and like the Facebook My conversation. conversational pieces. Absolutely. Let's so hear. as they all know, I'm a comedian. I'm from Baltimore. Mm -hmm. um, my dream is to be a stand-up worldwide um, comedian and or sit-down comedian. <laughs> <laughs> um, but 
I wanted people to take me serious. I've been through a lot. I came up, went through a whole lot growing up in foster care and then becoming a foster mom and, you know, just going through a lot of hurt and, and pain and stuff. And I just, one day I got on Facebook and I just was venting. I was actually upset and I was just speaking and so many people um, heard me. So many people could identify. Um, a lot of people tell me that's a part of real recognizing real. And so the name speaks for itself. I got my name when I was about 12 years old. Um, my cousin told me, he said, um, you need a name if you're going to be a comedian or what have you. And I said, uh, okay, well, what's a good name? And he said, you know what? You're just real. Just keep real. And so at 12 years old, I got real. And he told me that it stood for Remember Everybody Ain't Loyal. Mm -hmm. And that has followed me throughout my journey of being real to comedian. Um, it's my way of not allowing people, places, and things to discourage me or put me down. So it's not to say nobody is loyal, but it is to just remember that everybody is not. And so when you have that mentality, you accept it. It builds your confidence. It's my motivation. So what I started doing was out of anger, I was venting on social media, on live. And honestly, it went viral. Before I knew it, it was like 20,000 people on this live with me, particularly speaking on a family member that had hurt me. And um, they were just like, oh, my goodness, who are you? Do you do this? And I'm like, no, I don't do this. This is not what I do, but I can. Oh, you know, I got some stuff to talk about. So I started doing it every week because the people loved it. And so they started requesting it. So now I do it, a real talk conversation where I speak on the things that we are taught coming up not to talk about, like being raped, being molested. I had that experience. So I started speaking about it openly um, without shame and um, then I started speaking on just the family dynamics, the, the outcast of the family, the black sheep. You know, there's so many people that can identify with that alone. So, you know, just speaking on those dynamics, people are like, give me more real look. And, I, and actually, they send me suggestions. My inbox is flooded with just talk about this real, talk about that. And so I started doing that. Um, then it moved me into my organization uh, called Real Change, just being out here in the community, doing things for our community giving back, helping the children, um, doing it without funding out of my own pocket in the pockets of the people that follow me and support my vision, you know, um, and that's what I've been doing. I've been uh, put on newscasts all over Baltimore City for giving back, getting out there, really sweeping the streets and me and my husband doing it with me and motivating me to stay focused and doing it. And now it's like the doors are opening. So I've been doing this for about consecutively five years i've just started getting i guess the notoriety the last two years i've been getting really like all of the come do this come do that and so i'm blessed and i thank god because i thought you know i wasn't worth nothing before mm -hmm. so now i'm here and i'm knowing my worth so well i follow you uh, <laughs> a lot and like especially like some everybody know me i work like two jobs I, 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 i'm always working i'm in school i do a lot of stuff that's so like sometimes i feel down and he be busy yeah. and i can't call get on his nerves yeah. but <laughs> I, just, I pull up but um he does it a lot but no i'm just joking you don't ever get on that hey you serve you you pull up something on social media yeah. that makes some sense and so i pull you up uh -huh. oh that's okay i'll be like that's what's up uh-huh that's right get him get him yeah, we got to stand on something like, I mean, it's your truth, no matter what it is, no matter who likes it, it's your truth. And when you step out into that transparent lane and you're able to support somebody else, see, that's the one thing that I refuse to give into, not supporting other people. My dream is to be there for other people and their dreams. And so by being that kind of person, it's like only right for it to come back around on me. So, I mean, I haven't into people I can't work with and all of that. Like, my thing is, man, we all here and it's enough for us all. Like, why not? That's right. So, I want to keep, keep that man mm -hmm. I love everybody. That's right. And um, I, so I just got, Anika put me on to you. Okay. But I'm like, yo, I, I love this platform. Yeah. And I like what you talk about. Thank now, you. Now, do you have anything featured with you and your husband? Shucks, we do a lot of games and stuff together. Mm -hmm. We we about to take over this YouTube lane. This uh, <laughs> we played a big game on social media that was called Smack or Fat, where we smacked each other with powder, 
or what have you. And I'm telling you, if you got the answer wrong, you got smacked with powder. And then we um, did a sequel to it where we invited our friends to come in and they played it with us. Um, another married couple played it with us. And that actually, you know, had a lot of views and a lot of participation. People love our energy. But the biggest thing that my husband has taught me is that orange shelf is on. And my thing is he has supported and pushed real the comedian for so long. This year, this is his year. I want to support him in this season. I want to be there for him. And so they say behind every great man is a great woman, but beside every great woman is a great man. That's what it's about. It's about time. You know what I'm saying? You got to trust your process. Yeah. At the yeah. end of the day, I support everything that my wife do wholeheartedly. You know what I'm saying? Because I love what she's doing for the community. And I, I, she building herself up and she helping somebody. That's what we're about. We're about helping people. Move the dog is a is the message that helps you grow. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that's helping somebody. So I got a lot of things going on. I'm she said I'm <laughs> we'll let you get back to it. <laughs> no, no, he gives me a lot animals. of topics, you guys. I'm telling you, a lot of my topics that come from real talk, he just be like, babe, you should talk about this. So I'll be like, oh my God, what can I talk about? I talked about everything. And he'd be like, uh, you can talk about that. And so you know, a lot of my stuff is inspired by my husband through just his intellect. Um, at, in the beginning of our relationship, I took him as an introvert. But now I see that it's not that he's an inter introvert. My husband observes. And then when he speaks and when he does something, it's miraculously done because of his patience, because of the way that he lays back and let it happen naturally. He doesn't force things. I'm out here going to take mine. I'm just saying. I didn't wait too long. I'm going to get mine right now today. Today, so, <laughs> that's my mentality because y'all, I was a rug at first. I was so weak. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, when I look back on the me that I was yesterday, I was weak. I, I was all about living completely for somebody else, making everybody else happy and didn't care nothing about my own happiness. Mm -hmm. And so being in that place, it, it kind of like made me hate the person at the time that I was. And so I had to come out kicking and I came out screaming on Facebook and I, it's been up hill spiral sense like they've been loving me so still doing you that get that understanding <laughs> first you want to just straight going that exact boat. but when you change people places and things you yes. know what i'm saying you can uh see more clearly to make, so that you can make a better decision that's the truth and that's that's the, i think that was the attraction i took her away from everything <laughs> so she can get the focus on herself and figure out what she wants and she said when she came out, she came like she said, she came out the swing. I did. <laughs> and you know what's interesting? So, brother, I, I really see your wisdom. Mm -hmm. And I just want to like hear a couple of things about you. So, yes. like, where you from? What is it that you're doing? Oh my God. Um, I'm from Baltimore. I'm yeah. from East Baltimore. Um, I've been through some things. <laughs> I've been through a lot of things. Um, I got a story as well that I'm putting together, and I'm going to. Uh, be more vocal and presented to the world soon. But I am a chef, I do cater. Um, Food for Thought is an organization that I have that I just brought to the forefront a month ago. My mom just passed on the 29th, so I've been recouping from that. But I'm ready to get back to it. I'm buried my mom's, so I'm ready to get back to it. Um, it's an organization dealing with the youth. I, I currently have two youth that I tutor now. Okay. And that's what Food for Thought is about. So any conversation I had, that's what I labeled it as. Food for Thought. Mm -hmm. If it's a message that can help you grow, I'm all for it. Every day all day. Okay. So you like sit with them, have these conversations to help them grow. Absolutely. And um I'm currently I've a lot of people been reaching out to me. Like I said, since my mom passed, I'm ready to get back to everybody. I got a lot of good men throughout the city and other places that been reaching out to me like man you got that fire we ready to invest in you we need you <laughs> and, yeah. and that's what i'm about so i'm ready to bring it to all the way to the pool that's great man and i'll yes. say like growing up especially here in baltimore yes, sir. we didn't have a lot of guys like that and that's the thing we gotta we gotta show them another option right other than what their band show you feel what i'm saying that's how you create change yeah and yeah, I want to be a part of that. And I, I want it to be documented. So if you're searching for it, you're going to find it in Food for Thought. Okay, okay. 
And how can, for all the listeners, how can we reach out to you if we want to be a part of this? If you want to be a part of that, um, I'm on all social medias. Uh, Facebook, Eugene Dodd. Y'all can inbox me, shoot me a message, let me know what, what you can bring to the table. You feel what I'm saying? We need to get through to these youth for real. Because as you can see, the numbers are very high. Mm. The numbers are very high. And uh, people are being taken away. And they're reacting out of that pain and that fear. You feel what I'm saying? This is not a gang. This is not a place where you uh that's what you went to and you're trying to come over here and think you're being safe. No, that's not what we represent. If it ain't positive, then don't even, we're going to, we're going to know. We're going to know. Dang, son. I mean, good grief. Lord, that's nice. Hallelujah. And I thank you. Uh, I used to call his mother all the time and say, thank you, mommy. I think we, I had called her like uh, maybe, well, our anniversary in July, right. and I had it on my Facebook Live, and everybody was listening, and I was just like, Mommy, what do I call you and say all the time? And she said, what? Thank you for my son. <laughs> so that was our whole thing, but it's a blessing to uh, just know that a person is not just fine on the outside, but on the inside, he look even better. I just I just love it. My beautiful wife. Well, is this thing on? Yes, it's on. <laughs> Turn off the light. <laughs> we got people here. We ain't gonna not just not, not just not. Then look, we can be free for a month, black man. We just said I did. I'm sorry. Back to the Can't take it. Yes, sir. Right, and another point <laughs> that he is y'all gonna be funny old people. Right? Yes. Yes. Oh, that's Same like thing, the man. grandparents. That's like, my friend. That's yeah, my friend. My best friend. Yes. I, I got a couple of questions. Um, you say like your wife was telling me you're a chef mm -hmm. so that means you can cook anything mm -hmm. run down a recipe of one of your best meals i ain't gonna give you no recipe oh that was a <laughs> lie <laughs> you know, what else i don't even best? like people in the kitchen while i'm cooking well, tell me one of your I best meals that you made before one of my best meals that i made before let me let my wife ask that because that's what i cook for everything no hot stuff <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna say I, this man got some good you got I some good the, pineapple um chicken honey dude pineapple oh, bread God. Oh, and the oh, anything pineapple, you say red? Pineapple. Pineapple. So and that's my favorite meal, so oh, I guess I would say that. I, I, I can perfect it. Hold up. You could have said that before he all came. I should have put it in the pot. Like, bring something out here. We had an interview that, I had an interview this morning, so it was like I rushed from there to come to, down here. Yeah. What have you? I was on live showing them, the, you know, me on our, on my way there, so that's where we went earlier. But normally we do try to bring a small tray of that and a shirt from real the comedian to get y'all. But I'm gonna definitely make sure y'all get that. I got the crop out of the truck. Oh. And we do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got to right. so we right. cross the street. Right. This man can make it happen. I'm telling you. I'm going to make it happen. 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 I think oh that's God. what the kick That barbecue sauce, I think that might be what it is. Because I hate a pineapple. That's, uh, that's my mother, so she the person who taught me how to make that. Oh, she yes, the person uh, who taught me how to make that. He does that. Don't miss the mic. Oh, yeah, you can't miss the mic. You too. Oh, man. My bad. Sorry, y'all. I had a distraction in here with me today. But go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. I'm here. Okay. Well, that's um, that's all I got. Any other the way she's saying you cook, um, we gonna have to have hey, yes. he coming back again. He yeah, really does. So what I do for real. Yeah. 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 Yes, so we had one lady came on and um she showed all her food and she went viral like really. Yeah. Right. Well, we be back the yeah. up. We be back the up. We see the whole building. We see the whole building. I was just gonna take the shirt off and let them cook in the kitchen. They were gonna go by, but I promise you that. They just seen this black pastor. They thought the pastor died. They were slaving. Dang, he hasn't been resurrected. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm trying to tell you how it would have went viral. Tell you all the time. Go ahead, any day. Give me the green light. Yeah, that's so what I'm saying. Give me the green light. Give me the green light. So, question How long have you been married and how long have you been together? You met me, you uh oh. Met me, you stuck with me. Go ahead and answer the question. Oh, man. You know, I know. No, we've been together for about five years. And I'm uh, married for three. Yeah, that's yeah. Married for three. I wanted to marry him the first day, but I couldn't. 
you know, and so I had to wait a year, then it got postponed, you know, we had people falling out the wedding, we was dealing with the death of every year of our postponed wedding, we lost our best man, the best man died, every year, oh, I'm yeah. telling you, and, um, even the last year that we got married, the best man died, and that was his brother, his brother ended up um, passing the weekend after our wedding, I'm um, all the way from Ohio yeah, so. and passed away the next weekend. But yeah. he told me, he said, I wouldn't have missed it for the world. He was wow. there. And he made it. He was there. He, he was had there for that wedding. with his kidneys, but he was there. Yeah. yeah. He signed himself out of ICU. To be there, yeah. <laughs> That's how like, it happened. Like, uh, I'm coming to this wedding. He got there a little late, but he was like, sis, I made it. But he was a part of the wedding since day one. Mm -hmm. And we had a lot of, like, the, the, the dynamics of the family. Um. It's too soon, and da 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 da, and he has a past, and you doing this, and so we. It was a lot about what people wanted with my life in the beginning, and so I just stepped out on faith, and I just let, you know, God start ordering my steps, and, mm. and stop listening to people, mm. and now I'm happily married. Something they thought was just a fling, mm. turned into forever. a forever marriage. Like I can see myself. Growing old, I'm already growing old with him. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, he helps sitting down, he helps me tie my shoes. <laughs> he does all that I kind of stuff now. He cooks for me. The biggest thing is, I was very sick when I met my husband. I was mm -hmm. like next to death. I had been on life support three times, and I had nursing coming out. I was a lot of people in my family. Nobody actually knows this. This is an explicit, mm -hmm. exclusive that I'm saying right now. But mm -hmm. he literally started taking care of me. Like I, I was almost like babyfied like diapers included like i was really you know shown that this man would be there for me without it all you know and he even left his job and everything to be there for me and my foster children and you know he dealt with people saying oh he's not working and he's not doing this and they didn't even know that he was doing that for me because without him being there i couldn't even have my kids or the things that I was doing, you know, but he never said anything. And I, I believe that's what's made us so much stronger being in those low places so early that now it's just like, I don't already seen that, you know, for better, for worse or sickness and health. I didn't already been shown that. So I know I made the right decision and I know he did too. So, you know, he brought me about that thing and I haven't been sick now in five years since that when he met me, I was, like I said, but now five years haven't been admitted into the hospital one time. That was a big thing for me because I was always in the hospital for asthma attack. It was just asthma attack after asthma attack after asthma attack. And so I haven't had one major asthma attack not for five years. So, that's beautiful. you know, that's yeah. the truth. That's great. So, yeah. You know, I'm loving it. Like, it's not always perfect. We, we have our, our days. But we have decided that we're not going to allow those moments of, of disagreement to impact our life on a wholehearted level. We got to mm -hmm. both say, you know what, yesterday wasn't good, but we're going to press pause and we're going to just have a good day today. We can mm -hmm. do that and really enjoy mm -hmm. our day where people can't do that. They feel like they have somebody got to hold on to it. Like, well, no, who's going to be the referee to come out and say I was right? It doesn't matter if you were right. Right now, what y'all need to do is remember why you together and focus on that today because your yesterday is going to mess up your today if you can't handle it and so we figure out a solution once we calm down we figure out the solutions and, and we work on them and that's what it is we leave it there and so that's growth the first year was a hard year but you know i'm still willing and able to do whatever it takes to keep my marriage and i know that i want to do all the work um I just love my husband. Like That's I said, what marriage is. He's every day. You know what I'm like, every it's day. a job every day. Like it's, it's compromised. It's, it's, a, it's a big job, but I'm up for it. Yeah. I know that I'm like the person that I want. You feel what I'm saying? That God yeah. sent for me. Great. Like I know it. I'm glad. That's what I pray for. Understand. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? And when I met her, that's all we did was talk. We talked about being here. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? It was our goals. Yeah. That's what we looking forward to. We make, we manifesting them now. Yep. We're, we're growing together. And the reason I bring that up is because, you know, it's hard being a plus size woman, you know, um, with a fit man, I'm going to say, or vice versa, um, because people will really walk up to you thinking that he's my brother or he's my friend, like he's somebody, and like he's not man. my husband. The problem, like, man, like, the like, the you know, I've been there. So. People focus on the show yeah. <laughs> instead of the person. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's why they don't know. Yeah. When they get together, they don't know 
that person. Yeah. You, that's what you got caught up on what she had on, what she looked like. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. This is somebody that I want to raise my children. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? You gotta look that deep. I'm gonna give them to you too. Come on, let's go. What? I'm getting this uterus together. <laughs> you don't know. They they renovating the kitchen right now. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> so it's a I blessing. Man. Bro, bro, bro. I do love you, baby. I love you too. Yeah. This is um I, I can see the balance. Between you two. Yeah. And I think the viewers can see that as well. Yeah. And you know, I love the platform, mm -hmm. but you know what I see? How dope it is to hear both of you together. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Everybody for say that. For everybody to see the balance. That's what she want, though. That's yeah, what like, she fighting for. Like, yeah. we, that's what we go through on you know? daily. Like she want me to put yeah. myself more out there like she yeah. is. Yeah. But at the end of the day. It's my process. It's not her. And so through her process and found to a point where she went to Facebook and started venting. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. she, she was doing it in a reckless way at first. And now she's doing it in a positive way. And she using it to help someone. Yeah. yeah. We all together. We for the same call. Right. <laughs> we for the same call. Right. Right. And so um, I like the kind of caveat to um, a little segment that was uh, just put together. Mm -hmm. And these are called real topics. Mm -hmm. So I want to hear both of your perspectives on recent events. Okay. Um, let's start with this one. So the president mm -hmm. came out during the debate, mm -hmm. and they asked him about racism and denouncing. It. Mm -hmm. And then he told his message to racists. He didn't denounce it. Okay. He told the supremacists. To stand by and stand back. Stand up. I'm sorry, stand by and stand, stand down. down. That's the first time oh, I, heard right. that. I heard that. I heard it. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. now the supremacists are posting like, oh, yeah, we're getting ready. Yeah. Like it's a war coming. It's been doing war already, though. We've been in war. They've been, just been blatant about it. What I can respect about a person mm -hmm. is a person showing me who they are. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's the that's the difference between me and other people. I'd rather that's like a uh, what a homosexual. You got people that are undercover. Mm -hmm. I can respect the person that's saying this is who I am, mm -hmm. opposed to the person that's high. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Because like, now I've yeah. got to watch myself run. But far as I stay, we are at war. We've been at war. Mm -hmm. We've been trying to separate us mm -hmm. <laughs> with the wall, with everything. It's divide and conquer. Mm -hmm. And that's that's what they're going for. He, mm -hmm. he, he, he's trying to make white people support him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's what he's saying. Put him on standby. Like he's trying to empower them mm -hmm. with the message that, that he gave. But at the end of the day, we have to keep putting that positivity out there. Mm -hmm. That's what's going to create the change. Mm -hmm. You got the negative and you got the positive. Mm -hmm. We got to continue to put continuously put it up there mm -hmm. and that's how you create the change teach well how i feel about it is it's not the president <laughs> it's not the president i know as people we gotta have somebody something to blame i don't i'm not republican i don't agree with trump but i don't believe it's just trump i believe it's a it's a whole lot of different little things and um and so my main focus right now is the discrimination between um our blue people and our colored people um that's my focus and my lane um wholeheartedly i'm actually currently in the police academy um on hold right now i'm trying to become a police officer as well if i can get past this 1.5 mile run you know that agility test is real so i did conquer doing 30 30 uh push-ups and uh, trying to do these 10 sit-ups or whatever, and so I conquered those things, but I'm that one point so I'm not run. But I, I wanted to join the force just because that's what I've done a lot of my life. Whenever I see the turmoil or um, the confusion or the problems, I'm just like, how can I solve it? What can I do? And when I think of the blue, I don't, I don't think we'll ever be able to beat them outside in. And so inside, out, I can join, I can be better, I can be a role model, I can be an example, I can be the officer beside the officer, letting them know like that's going too far, or you know, I can be the officer that, you know, 
push another officer's knee out of somebody's neck. And so that's how I look at it from the inside, because now y'all can't deny me because I am blue. And so it's, the war is blue and black right now, white and black right now, um, every day. And so the Breonna Taylor situation um, really impacted me wholeheartedly. I think she put a lot of gas up underneath of me. I mean, you know, it's like every hour and then you have something that happens that just give you that another push to do more. And so, you know, the Breonna Taylor situation, me looking in the mirror every day, being an African-American woman, how can I not be impacted by that? How can you not feel like that has nothing to do with you? You know, it's sad to say that a lot of our people, African-American people, we feel like, well, if it ain't my business, you know, I'm not around it. It doesn't apply to me. But my thing is that does affect you and it does impact us. And every time that you look into the mirror, look into your children's eyes, you, you, you see that you're a part of that demon of racism based off of the people that we done lost, based off of riding into a drive through being treated unfairly because of the way the color of your skin. Mm -hmm. I've had this happen to me. Mm -hmm. um, me and my husband just had a, a, a viral situation that happened to us out where we live at in a homeowner's area where we have a home and um, with racism. And we had to go live about it because literally this lady was telling us she wasn't giving us our change. And my husband had paid her with $50 Shout out to Kelly from the protesters out there at Vets Crab House. Oh. They showed up for me, um, made a lot of noise out there, but the noise is what got me my money back, what got my husband his money back. But we had been patiently waiting in this homeowner's area where we live and have a home for these people to give us our change. Imagine walking into the store with $50, buying something for $13, being owed $36, and them telling you, no, you're not, and you're not getting it. And what you going to do? And so when my husband came back to the car, I was in the car and he told me that I, my first thought was, what? Like, let me go in here and see like, what's going on. And when I got in there, I was met with the same kind of demon, I'm going to say. Um, and so I went live. I said, I'm going live because before we even before they try to say that we were angry or I'm a big black girl and I was out there with a thug man, black man, and we was causing problems, I want to record it. And so I started recording it. It was a three day, I'm sorry, two day um, situation. We was told to come back the next morning. However, the next morning on live, going into the same 7-Eleven, I was told, he was told, no, we're not gonna give you a change. We didn't watch the footage. That's what we was waiting for, the owner to watch the footage to see that he she didn't get no change. She was trying to say that she gave so, me my change, but yeah. that's the whole and thing. She didn't. she didn't. And so the owner did tell them to look at the video and then the next day they would let us know. When I went in the next day, in the evening time, um, she basically told me, like, no, we ain't watched the video, but we just gonna go with what our cashier said. People were just enraged because they knew that the law was called uh, the night before. They knew that it was people out there. I ended up getting so sick because they put me in a car that was like 102 degrees, and I ended up having like a panic asthma slash attack. And so I was like putting the ambulance on live. Like, it was just a big thing. And so I just felt so defenseless um but once my people started showing up foster children that i had fostered started showing up and my phone started ringing and the support was real the unity was real and so that owner came up and he was like um gave gave the money to kelly and um uh, and ricky vogue Ricky Vaughn. Ricky Vaughn. Yeah, shout out to y'all. They they definitely came in and they talked to the owner. They got us our money back or whatever. But it's just sad that we have to go through all of that, you know, for us to get our change, you know. But, you know, that just lets me know that, like, the change that we want, we got to get up and do something about it. You might not be this big protester or I'm a much this and much for that. But you got to decide to do something because every hand matters. And that's what our people had back in the day. It was unity. It was the fact that we stood together and we're so separated now. That is terrible. We're separated in our families, separated in our, uh, you know, in, in the workplace. We're separated. Everything is separation. Networks don't like each other. Like organizations don't want to organize together. And it's just so much separation. And that's what's killing us as a race because that is the way for them to beat us. And that is the way that we won. We think about slavery. We think about the marches. We think about the things that Martin Luther King and all the great ones did. They had sit-ins. They, they, they did things in the movement to bring us up out of situations. And we don't have that. So they can kill one of us on camera and say, what you going to do about it? 
You know, Breonna Taylor's case was never even trialed. They never had anybody indicted for her murder. And that's how, you know, our people, they didn't even do that. Some of them didn't do their homework because I did. I'm not going to say all. But, you know, people thought that they were on trial or they was having some kind of justice for Breonna in that court case. And that's not what it was for. It was for the endangerment of the people around. So the court case was about the officer shooting into the wall, not killing Breonna. So, you know, it's, it's a lot of uh, rumors going around, but that's the fact. And also, another fact of the situation is a lot of people say, well, if they accept the money, then that's a bribery, then, then, and you took the money, so your loved one did. It's not that. When a person is wrongfully murdered, then that is a separate case. That's a civil case. You know, you are supposed to, you know, fight for, for your civil case as well. The criminal side of things was the officer that murdered her. That never went to court and will never go to court because that was said that uh, the uh, state's attorney or what have you said that the only way that Brianna would have a chance to actually fight for justice is if it went federal because it's already been denied in the uh, uh, state's state, court. That's right, that's so right. trying to keep the facts in my mind, but pretty much Brianna Taylor's death was never addressed yet. So, so basically, they just going to say, let's close the book on it. They already said that. They, they basically said that it was justified. Mm -hmm. yeah. They said they gave, wow. gave them the money. Let's that's close the other side. It was justified. Yeah. So you know? they feel. When, they, when they give you that money, that's how they feel. But don't think that, that that was the only money yeah. that was kicked out. They get it every day. They pay those payouts money. every day. Yeah. They protect their own. Yeah. <laughs> that's what we got to do. Yeah. You feel what I'm it's like the hospital, malpractice. They, they pay out every day these hospitals and, and people who got the money they pay out every day but that has nothing to do with that's a wrongful death suit that has nothing to do with the law behind it and so our people not knowing law and not knowing our rights we assume things more than we know we assume that that was the court case because i've actually had somebody tell me like that was messed up they let him off for killing rihanna he was never indicted for killing Brianna, you know, and so we gotta spread the messages we that people do our own research. Yes. Stop listening to what people tell you. Yes. Do your own research. You feel what I'm saying? Yes. And come to a conclusion for real. So love out to Brianna Taylor's family, her mom, you know, her loved ones. Um, if you hear this, just know that Real the Comedian, I've shared you on my platform. Um, I stand by Brianna's truth. She was an amazing woman. Um, she was definitely a central person. She gave back, and we thank you for her. We thank Brianna for her life and the person that she was. And I will definitely always remember her and um, try to, uh, you know, do my piece of action about it. So that's okay. what it is on that. And my next question is um, sort of based off of something that you, you said, and something that recently went viral as well. Um, a retired NYPD officer. Mm -hmm. He talked about how he served and he basically policed in like Harlem, the Bronx, all the worst parts of each mm -hmm. borough. Mm -hmm. And he said never did he have to draw his gun and shoot someone. And he talked about the new militarized ideology mm -hmm. of police. Um, what are your thoughts on and especially because of what you're trying to do and accomplish, mm -hmm. what are your thoughts on like how the police now approach compared to how they did maybe when we were children? Wow, my thoughts is right now, to be honest, to be very honest, I'm afraid of the police, you know, mm -hmm. and fear will kill you all. Mm -hmm. You know, they say, they used to tell you coming up as a kid, like a person that's afraid of you will kill you right. faster than a person that's not. You know, that's and nice. so right. I believe nice. that the same fear I have, I do believe that an officer has that same fear in them. And when you put two afraid people in the same situation, you don't know what's going to happen. It could be detrimental to the officer or the people. So we got to bridge that gap. We got to find out, find a way to uh, 
as a teach the academy, you know, and, and, and teach the people as well. And so that we can bridge the gap through through action. Because right now, you know, you can say whatever you want to say with a camera on you. But the statistic is when I get pulled over, mm. I'm afraid. I don't mm. even want to pull over in the daytime by myself with an officer. I told my husband, if a police pull me over, I'm driving to the closest something where there's a lot of people at. Like I refuse, and you know, me just doing that alone might make that officer feel like I'm trying to get away, or I, he got to be more hostile with me when he catch up to me. When whole time I'm afraid, he's afraid, and so when people are afraid, things happen that wouldn't have happened if that fear wasn't there. And so we got to work on that fear first. Why am I afraid? And then for the same thing for the officer, why is this officer afraid? And if we can find a way to bridge the gap, because I can't even tell you right now, um, honestly, then I believe in that problem will start, you know, at least the numbers will drop some. It won't be such a war or so much, you know, hostility when, when a black man, not even just a black man, a black woman um, is pulled over by a white officer. Because honestly, I don't care if they're white or black. If they got the blue uniform on, I'm afraid. Back in the day when we were kids, I wasn't afraid of officers, but I wasn't hearing about so many people dying because of them either. You understand what I'm saying? So, you know, we make choices based off of either somebody else's experience or our own or what we was taught. So I know that if I want to be a productive citizen, a, a, a successful person, cut a long story short, I'm going to do certain things in my life. I want to work. I want to have a career. I want to, you know, have a bank account. These are the things I want to do. I know that partying all day is in, and all night and not caring about this and not having no goals and stuff is not going to get me there. So we're saying that that's the way I was raised or the way I came up. On the other side of things, if I'm being raised like, look, Breonna Taylor was murdered in her home, in her sleep. She wasn't breaking law. So you can't say, oh, you out here doing all of this, and that's the reason for it. It's no reason for what happened to her. There's no justification for that. And so with uh, Aubrey jogging and Floyd coming out of the store, even if it was $20, $100, $200, why did his life have to be taken? That builds fear. That plants a seed of fear into the people in the generation that see that. You know, when Rodney King was beat, you know, that was something that went up, but it was like Rodney King and then you didn't hear about it, you know, anything else hitting it like how. But this demon has been around since about, I want to say, slavery, but as far as law enforcement, the 1960s, because I've done my mm. homework even mm. way back with Tosa, you know, mm. um, a lot of the things that came out right, that's, that's out right now is out because this is the time we're living in. We're living in a very racist time. The only thing we don't have right now is outward slavery, like where they chain us and walk us down the street. But are we being exterminated? I do believe. I do believe it's not, you know, you don't know what you can say. Um, you don't want to make a mad because you'll be outnumbered. You, you know, it's, <laughs> even me online, I, I get messages from Facebook, to be honest, about certain things that I talk about. You know, they want to make sure that I'm not trying to incite something. And I'm like, how am I trying to incite something? Because I'm trying to teach my people. And when I say my people, I'm talking about black and white. I always make that clear. But teaching the person, because they need to be taught too. White people need to be taught that we're people just as well as black people need to be taught that they're people. You know, and that's what I stand for. But, you know, you hear that all lives matter thing. That just works my nerves. I don't know how y'all feel about that when you hear all lives matter. I mean, it's so redundant because I feel like who's saying all lives don't matter? We're saying that black lives matter because we're being exterminated. That's our focus today. That doesn't mean that dogs' lives don't matter. You know, animals and insects even. I don't know. I never said that their lives didn't matter. But right now, we're under a heavy extermination. Our black men, our black women, our children. Now, that's the, the main focus is killing our kids. Now, if you want to stop stop history from, from happening in generations, kill the kids. You kill. They stay, we're doing our men and, and jailing them and murdering them. Now they're taking out children. Breonna Taylor was 26 years old. She was a child. I mean, she was a young lady, but I mean, she was very young. That's that's, that's very young. And, and it's not just her. It's a lot of young people. And then they do a lot of allowing some of the black on black crime. Like, they allow black 
to kill black. How many of our people that's been murdered right here, even on Bel Air Road? I lost a family member on Bel Air Road. We don't know who did it yet. They don't tell us. They a lot of our murders are unsolved cold cases. We know about the murders, but they're not finding the people. But if it's one of them, oh yeah. Even what was his name, Suter? Officer Suter shot in the back of his head. That's suicide. I mean, if somebody gonna do something, suicide. Yes, that was documented suicide. His family still speaking on it, but see, people move off of. I guess what's in the spotlight. That's the time we in right now. So who's getting the most? Who's hot? They think Floyd is old now. Like that's old news. We all the tell is old news. Her case set set was the title of investigation for two months before Floyd. You know, and so that's my thing. And so when I got into um, coming out with certain things out of my mouth, I had some great leaders reach out to me and tell me out of teaching and letting me know, like, look, it's going to be some things I know you feel strongly about, but you can't say. But in my young mind, maybe even naive, I'm like, why not say it? I'd rather die knowing I stood for something than I felt for anything. And I'm okay with that because I can't humble myself anymore. I have to speak on what's hurting us. And that's hurting us. And the, and the family's not being there for each other. Like right now, I've been four months without speaking to any family members. And I'm telling you, it's been a hard four months, a very hard four months. And so um, just teaching, because there's people out there that's being affected by these things. And, Generational changes. Yeah. But if, if, if I got to deal with you, and that means I have to go without, or I can't love me, or I can't be happy, then Somebody got to make a decision. And that's one of our things with, with our people. We don't want to make decisions unless they're easy, unless they're happy decisions. When it comes down to being in a toxic relationship and somebody got to go, why do our people have to stay until somebody get locked up, somebody get killed, something big and bad tragically happen? Why can't we just both as adults say, you know what, this is not working out. I'm going to let you go your way and I wish you the best and thank you. You know, why can't we be like that and go out separate ways? No, it got to be, oh, yeah, girl, we fought to the police came, police came, locked him up, locked me up. He had his, you know, why do we got to be all that? Right. I mean, so. That's exactly what that's right. I refuse. Yeah. I refuse to give in to it. So that's now, from right. so right. now what you're talking about is my yesterday. Because if you knew me in my today, you see my growth and you would accept my growth. And if you can't accept my growth, the person I am today, I don't care how. Oh, she's just too proud. I don't care what you try to make out of it, because they'll try to make a way for it just not to be your real. But it's your truth. If they can't respect it, then you got to make the decision, because people won't make those decisions. People will live in agony. Oh, I'm doing it for the kids. I'm doing it because our money is tied up together. I'm doing it because, you know, it's just the way it is. Uh -uh. Life's too short for that. I got to do this today, because this is going to create some change, even if it means me not being around you. And I'm okay with that. You know, people in our history are, are, as a child, by the age of 12 years old, if you think of Africa and, and the children, the way that they're raised, you know, by 12, 13, they're married off, they're given to other, they, that attachment that we have here in America is in other countries, they're like, wow, they got too much, too much freedom to do certain things. And honestly, it makes you think, like, maybe if we didn't have so much freedom, we wouldn't be doing and going through what we go through today. We understand that this is a season, you know, and we'd be different. I'm not saying I agree wholeheartedly with it, but if that was all I knew, that's the way I would be. That's how I would have grown up. My, my hair braider tells me all the time, the way that y'all talk to men. And, you know, initially I used to look at that like, what you mean the way I talk to a man? Man, better not talk to me no type of way. But when she really explains it, the love that she has for her husband and her, her boys and her men and her family, it's like, okay, I understand now. I'm not just going off of that, I'm a black woman, ain't no man going to control me mentality. I'm actually listening to what she's saying. It's not that they're going to allow a man to do them wrong. Their men take care of them. Their men provide for them. And they're strong black men, but at the same time, they don't smoke. They don't talk back to them. They don't, you know, the man is the head, not the tail. Now, as a woman, I respect that, and I'm learning to adjust my life around that. Not saying my husband controls me, no, but to say that 
when he speaks and he says something, instead of me initially trying to figure out what he's saying wrong, mm -hmm. I'm trying to hear what he's saying right. Mm -hmm. What can I learn from what he's saying? It's something positive in everything. And so with that mindset, if oh. I got to agree to disagree, that's cool. But initially, my first reaction is not going to be the way it was or the way I seen women talking to men before, mm -hmm. like treating them like kids and like little boys. And But you want them to have responsibility. You talk to them like you're a child. Mm -hmm. You know, it's toxic. So, mm -hmm. you know, I'm just, oh. man, it's just oh. so much. I try to speak, oh. say as much as I can oh. when, I, when oh. I got people listening because I feel like if they hear it from us, then you will know this is not something that, you know, this, I guess, African woman is saying. Because the first thing we're going to say is, uh-uh, we don't do that over here. You from Africa. I'm saying it, and I'm doing it over here, and I'm in America. So I'm just like, you know, it can be done. And it's not forced. It's not abuse. I'm not walking around with my head down. I'm very vocal. I'm more extrovert than he is. But at the end of the day, if my husband say something, then guess what I'm going to do? I guess we're going to ride it out. We're going to see what happens. Now, if he take me off the cliff or look like I'm going to the cliff, then I got to draw the line. But for the most part, it's like, okay, I'm going to give you that. And so, honestly, I don't know if nobody believes it, but that's what the Bible says. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, 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 the man is the head, not the tail. And when you put him in a position of being the tail, then this is the man that you're going to get. Mm -hmm. They're not going to be that man that you really want. You can't be mm -hmm. wanting this kind of man, but then treat them like that. Mm -hmm. And so... I was ready for a relationship and I was ready to humble myself and to be submissive to my husband and to, 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 to hear him out. And so I believe that's why it's working and it's going to keep working because I'm going to keep learning new ways to find understanding with anybody I love. But that's my, I want to, I want to do it that way. You know, they say you tried it your way for this long. Try it somebody else's way. They say you keep getting a man that puts his hands on you. How about you try to change the man that you're looking mm. for? Keep I'm going. talking to somebody. Somebody mm. is out there dealing with a situation because if you do what you always done, you get what you always got. You got to change up the way that you're approaching a situation sometimes. You got to change up your taste. Try something new. Try something different and see what you get. I bet it's different. Mm. And just a just a like kind of caveat to your husband. Um, what you said is so powerful mm -hmm. to the women, or more so, lost people, mm. brother. And I'll I'll like say this right. So in relationships, right? Mm -hmm. And and I understand this this is your first relationship, but in your past, you probably had. Um, a relationship or two uh -huh. where you dealt with a woman who, instead of uh, even if you're saying the most common sense thing, mm -hmm. she'll bump heads with you. Right. Just to do it. You know what I mean? Right. You'll say just, you know, using your example, mm -hmm. I'm trying to guide you away from the cliff mm -hmm. and you're running towards it. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to even hear me say stop. Move the dog. Y'all hear him? You can't oh, tell me what to do. How many times? <laughs> like how many times does that happen? Oh man! Oh yeah, my man, goodness! Regularly, yeah, you know what I'm saying? it's common. It's very common. You feel very, what I'm very. At the end of the day, as a person, you have to make some decisions. Like my wife said, it comes down to decision what you want. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? You gotta know your non-negotiable mm -hmm. when you go into a situation. That's mm -hmm. what I mean when I say people. They out here pretending. I'm going to mm -hmm. just say what it is. They pretending because mm -hmm. they really don't know what they want. They really don't have no identity. Right. Right. You feel right. what I'm saying? So yeah. that's where it comes from. Mm -hmm. Get to know yourself first. Take some time for you. Self-love is the love. Mm -hmm. You got to know what you want to know what you're going to go after. When I met my wife, she said she was ready to settle down. I didn't think that I was ready to settle down. Mm -hmm. I was in a whole other mindset when I met my wife. But upon talking to her, getting to know her, she got to know me, my goals, what I wanted out of life. And that's what we start building on. Not saying that it was perfect, no. Everything that we ever been through, like I said, for us to be at this point that we at now, mm -hmm. stronger mentally. Mm -hmm. What I do, I pray for understanding. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For me and my wife, that's what I pray for. Under peace and understanding. Because mm -hmm. if you understand something, you got a decision to make because you're held accountable for it. And that's the problem. People don't want to be held accountable. They want to be followers. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. You feel what I'm saying? You want to be followed. <laughs> but the I ain't going to talk y'all here enough, but no, that's what it's about. <laughs> that's, that's why I'm here. Who you yeah. thought that nice yeah. that helps you grow. That's hey. what it's about, man. Right. Teaching. And, and hearing that from uh a female and also a male perspective. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Sometimes, That's you true. know, when with with dealing with listeners, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. You'll have a woman that's like, a man can't tell me anything. Mm-hmm. So they have to hear from a woman. Mm-hmm. And then you got men who are like, a woman can't tell me anything. Mm-hmm. So they got to hear from us brothers. I think so, it comes down to who, who that person respects. Yeah, you feel absolutely. what I'm saying? Looks yeah. up to a lot, a lot of people out there respecting the wrong people. What are they doing to be respected? Mm-hmm. You feel what I'm saying? What are they doing just because they're a family member? No, if they're not doing the proper things that respect you the same, uh, the same way you respect them, then you gotta remove yourself. Mm-hmm. Right, you gotta remove yourself from that. And so, yeah. not saying, not saying that you can't mend that situation. You feel what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, I don't see you. Mm-hmm. That's how I feel, God. I don't see you. Mm-hmm. You think I see you? I hear you, but I don't see you. See you. you feel what I'm saying? My so, biggest thing is breaking those cycles. And, and you know, from what we see coming up as a young girl, you know, I grew up, I had 67 placements I grew up in. Mm-hmm. You know, I bounced around foster care household to household, group home to group home. I had white parents, black parents. I had some Korean parents. I'm telling, I'm telling the truth. I grew up on a farm for most part of my life. I was born in East Baltimore, but I was shipped over to the Eastern Shore in uh, Cambridge, Maryland. And I grew up, I had a pet goat named Rose coming up as a little girl. So, you know, people seeing me here, they would never guess that I was on a farm and had to, make my own food and knew how to shave a turkey and, and, and a chicken and all of those type of things because of the exterior in the book that people judge before they read it or turn the pages. But I'm just living proof that, you know, you can go through all these things in life when you even wasn't in control of your own life as far as being a kid coming up. But then you still have to make your own choices as to what you're going to go and do with your life. And my whole thing is if I had a mother that was strung out and and used drugs and stuff like that, I I know that those choices caused these things to happen in her life through me growing up with her. If I had um, an opportunity to to meet somebody that been through something that I've never even been through and they share their experience with me, I'm not going to, the type of person that I am, I'm like, okay, I ain't got to touch it to see that it's hot. I see that you're telling me this and you don't have no reason to lie. And so I listened to that village. And that village we lost a long time ago for some of the young people. But that village was important. And even though I had so many parents and me and my foster mom to this day, we're really close. And, you know, she taught me a lot of the things that I've known. And I've I seen a lot of different places with traveling for her. Shout out to them, um, my aunt. Uh, is a book author and she took me and that was my first job as a young girl was being her assistant and traveling all over the world sitting down with the vice president eating and stuff that people in my area where i came up would have never had an opportunity to see so i actually thank god that i had the experience of being in foster care because it really showed me a lot of things that i would have probably never seen just being raised by two parents or one parent or what have you in the hood so my whole thing is now that i had a taste of the best of both worlds it's like now i have an advantage over a person that never had that experience to relate to if you really want to be honest now i know how to go in the kitchen i wasn't afraid when COVID happened per se because i knew how to go in the kitchen and make something work without going to the market for two weeks i guarantee my cabinets got something in there already today that can feed me for the rest of this month if not two months because that's how i came up off of potatoes and the, the things that i naturally go to the market and get as a woman from what i've seen other women make market and do so if I can say that, then it has to be true that the toxic stuff that we see coming up, we adapt to a too. Oh, this is the way you talk to a man because you've seen your mother cussing your father out or because you saw your aunts and uncles fussing and fighting or, you know, you've seen women and men putting their hands on each other. That's intolerable in my merch. I'm not going to put my hands on him and he's definitely not going to put his hands on me as a man. So it's certain things that we're not going to do. So it's like, because we're not going to do that, we're not going to have certain outcomes. We're not going to have certain tests because we already know we're not putting each other through that. You know what I mean? Now, has life shown up 
any other time before I was ready, I don't know what it would have been, but I am ready. And I, one thing I've known in these five years of being with this man is every day is work. It's not a day I've woke up since I've been with this man that I haven't done something in my personal time to say, what can I do to be a better wife? What can I do to be a better girlfriend? And that's what got me. I was a wife before I was actually a wife on paper. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. I was already ready to share. I was. I don't. We don't do that. Who's paying for this and what's paying for that and how? Oh, what? Why? We don't do that. Everything is teamwork making a dream work with us. And so that's why I say he's my friend. We're on the same team. He's not my opponent. He's not an enemy. And when you realize that your partners is not your enemy. And, he, and they're not your opponent, vice versa, whether it's your wife or your husband or your girlfriend or your boyfriend, then you can have something different. But as long as you're looking at him like, oh, you might be trying to get over me. How much you spent? How much you spent? How much you got? How much you got? But where you going? How long we was out? We don't stay out past 3 a.m. We still him. I stay out to the next day, stay the night somewhere. But <laughs> I know that I'm not going to want that happening to me. I'm not going to do it to him. It's not control. It's respect. I respect this man, and so I respect my position and his position. So I tell my girlfriends, and I'm invited to stuff all the time. I let them know, like, I don't care what it is as long as I can be Cinderella. They're like, well, really? You know, girl, it's just one night. Let me tell you something. Don't start something you don't want to happen to you. And so my thing is, if I do run over, I'm on the phone, babe. Look, this is what's going on. This is where I'm at, and I'm on my way. And, and not only is that important as far as him knowing about my safety, me being a woman and being out there, like, you know, and, and knowing my state, am I drunk, am I intoxicated, am I about to drive? Like my husband is a part of those decisions when I'm leaving somewhere. So if he has to come and get me, you know, that can be done too. So I don't see it as with somebody on the outside, like, because the invitation stopped coming after a while. After a while, when you be like that, they be like, oh, no, don't invite her. You know, we're going to have some strippers. <laughs> I don't have to see strippers. It's a wedding. It's appropriate. But no, I don't want to see him every Friday if that's what you're into. You know, I'm a married woman. But if this is a wedding or if this is a party or something that's like an event, I will come out and be have fun. You know, but at the same time, I don't put strippers on my husband. Like, um, straight, hey, come over here and get on. He's like, this is doing nothing for me. I don't know. We don't have an open thing where we're sexual with other people and no swingers, but I didn't have some girlfriends that strip me like, go get them. And, and they didn't done it, you know, but at the end of the day, it's like, we're friends. So I'm not, you know, he knows he's the man for me, vice versa. So I, I think we have an advantage, and I believe my pastor told us the same thing. He gave us the best advice. This is the last thing I'm going to say about the relationship thing, but the best advice that I can give is the advice that was given to me and my husband. Um, before we got married, he told us, pick out three non-negotiables. And I said, well, what's a non-negotiable? He said, three things that you absolutely, just positively will not tolerate, accept, negotiate, compromise, whatever. What are those three things? I want you to do your homework, and that is your homework. And so we always share one of them out of them because the other two are personal. But my husband's one for me was for me to keep my nails done. And I was not one of those girly girls to keep my nails done and hair done and all that. Like, you don't I, like getting your nails done? I like getting it done, but it's not a have to for me. Like every two I have to do it. Or I don't have to do it now, but I'm just saying, like, for him to say that, that was the mindset. I was like, so what, I got to get my nails done? Like, do you got a nail fetish? Like, what's going on? And so... When he broke it down to me, because um, the pastor was like, don't do that. That's one of his things. Is he can only pick three. If that's what he wants, then you got to give him that. And so I said, okay. And um, so I said, well, why? And he was like, um, well, actually, it's a non-negotiable. Like, you don't have to talk about it if you don't want to. But he said, no, I do. Because you don't, you do for everybody but yourself. I feel like getting your nails done will be you focusing on yourself in some type of way. Because mm -hmm. believe it or not, I didn't. I would. It was everybody else for me. And so I would have hole in my shoes and I mean dead serious mm -hmm. and have the money in a bank. Like money, mm -hmm. not never a question for me. And um, so getting my nails done for him was me taking the time out for myself. And so of course, once you get your nails done, you you start looking at your hair and all the other kind of stuff all runs together. And so I understood that my thing for him was him not going back to prison. I, I knew that I, that was that's too much for me. My husband has been locked up before. And um, when I met him, he was home for a while, and I never really even wanted to get to know that person. But I did make it clear that I won't be that woman that's, like, dealing with the inmate and all of that and this and that. You know, that's what I didn't want. That was a non-negotiable. 
And so that was easy because he already had made the choice to not want to go back or what have you, or doing the little things he was doing back then. So it, it worked out in our favor, thank God. I'm glad he was ready because I wasn't ready to deal with it. So, you know, and the other things that we got is like, you know, like I said, they're private, but it's not as much sweat behind it. I just know in my mind, like, there's certain things I'm just not going to play with him about. Like, I just know that's his real three things. And he know what my three things is. So that knocks out six things that won't happen in our thing. And so, you know, I respect that. And I give everybody that advice because I feel like we don't do that when we're all happy. When we all thinking about the cloud nine and all the fun stuff when you first meet somebody, you ain't thinking about what they don't like. You only want to know what they do like. What's your favorite color? How, how many times have you actually said what you don't like? Like, um, what you don't like to do, what you don't like to wear, what you don't like to say, like, you know, what a person don't like. So those things pop up on us after some time. And it's like, oh, really? I never knew that about you. Like, really? And then now you you got all this time together. And it's like, well, if I knew you ain't like that, then I might, that might change the way I feel about you. And I might not even be with you. But now we 18 years in. But those non-negotiables are going to come out whether they come out now, later, Eleven years, and you have a person say, "I gave you all this time, and then it ain't work out," because you thought you was going to change something about a person they never wanted to change, was never going to change. If you'd ask those questions, you'd have those answers. What so, I feel like wasted time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can't waste time. 18, 18 years, so, a lot of time to People do it though. I'm thinking I'm just yeah. People I'm do it. And so I, I love that, man. That's the word. But I love y'all. Everybody, I don't even know. I feel like I'm ending my own show. <laughs> I love y'all. So I, I, yeah, I just want to uh, give a shout out to the people online who are commenting. So uh, Jackie Chisholm. Hey, everybody. Hey, Jackie. Oh, hey, Jackie. oh that's my girl. Shout out to Jackie, y'all. Jackie is going into surgery. She's one of my real sisters. I didn't even speak on real sisters, but I have a real sisters group on Facebook. Any woman um, from ages 10 years old to 199, I like to say, um, it's a woman's group, and we're all from all over the world. I have sisters in Palm Spring. I have sisters in Texas. It's, it's amazing. Like Alabama, um, and these women really show up. We just gave our first event um, on August the 29th, same day we lost our mom, rest her soul. And um, so real sister Jackie is on here, you guys. She's going to be in surgery, uh, major surgery tomorrow morning at 9 p.m. Our sisters and real sisters is definitely praying for you, Jackie. And thank you for being such a down supporter and just being my sister. I appreciate you and love you. And, so, yeah. and how can uh, other women who are interested in joining? Right on Facebook. Facebook group. It's a real group of women. Um, there's no black sheep. There's no clicks. It's not a gang. Everybody is accepted. That's why it's called sisters, not sister. Um, it's for all women. We got to break that stigma that women can't get along or a woman can't, you know, compliment another woman. So we're bridging the gap in our own special way with real sisters. And so okay. I'm this for it. Um, real quick, y'all, tell everybody where to find you all at. Mm -hmm. All the information they need to know to get to y'all. Um, Jane, let's start off with you so we can check business out right. there. Yeah. Y'all can find me on Facebook. Um, Eugene Dog on Instagram. Full for Duck. Uh, hashtag Full for Duck. Um, Instagram. Full for Duck. Yeah. 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 Also, shout out to Nicole Cole that's up on here. I love you. I know you're watching. I appreciate your support, real sister. Um, I'm Real the Comedian on all social uh, networks. Real the Comedian. One word. R-E-A-L-T-H-E-C-O-M-E-D-I-A-N. Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. Real the Comedian. YouTube, Real the Comedian. Um, real Sisters is an organization I have. I'm sorry, a group I have on Facebook that you can look up under your groups and put in Real Sisters, R-E-A-L-S-I-S-T-E-R-S, -E -E and that should pop up with a group of women raising their hands in different shades of color. And last but not least, Real Change is an organization. Um, and you can Google Real Change Organization. I'm the founder of that, and that is for Baltimore, and by putting in Real Change. And so that's all of my tags. And I want to thank you guys, um, Anika and Otis, 
for having us on here. It means everything to me. You were very persistent. Um, I can appreciate you guys on this level and any other level. Um, see, your opportunity is a blessing and a privilege, and so I definitely appreciate it. So when I make, when I blow up a balloon, we all blow up. That's how I am. I tell everybody that. That's my little signature. I'm not going to never forget where I came from and, and the things and the people that actually gave me an opportunity. So bless you all. We love giving uh, people a chance to be here, and we are very uh, humble. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I, I just appreciate the wisdom and the knowledge that I drew from both of you. Okay. And just know that, like, not only like am I, I will listen to this again. Okay. But I'm also take this to my daughter. Okay? Thank you. Because it's this it's jewels that y'all drop that she needs to, mm -hmm. you know, and just the children and the uh, oh, 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 we got we got we got this November event coming up. A family that prays together stays together. You guys are definitely invited. Um, it's newly put together, but we're going to be giving back to the community, just regular people giving back to the community. We're looking at our homes, saying what we don't use, no matter what it is children's clothes, shoes whatever we have and we're going to feed them first um and i'm coming up with the date and i was going to talk to anika about trying to get her whole so that i can do this hey, event yeah. and, and so helping the people um networking over here give up the and, you know but i want to do a dinner call a family that prays together stays together i don't have any family right now to spend the holidays with and so i know somebody else out there i won't do it on thanksgiving but i want to do it within the november month so that we can bridge the gap with the people that don't have that. Okay. And so we're going to be giving them um, dinners and stuff, and then we're going to do our thing after. So I'm yeah, trying to Halloween get your good. Halloween party, too. I wanted to book you for two things. So <laughs> all is good. <laughs> I, I looked on her page and saw that that's what she do. So I want to support a sister that looked out for me. And um, so we can definitely do that booking or deposit, whatever you want to do, so I can lock that in. Halloween party as well. I've been speaking on it for October the 24th. I wanted to do a costume party okay. and so and um you know just have the real sisters and people come out and dress up i want to be a black pastor so, um don't know what he's going to be but you know that's what we want to do and uh, we got watch time i'm ready i'm um, done <laughs> now we appreciate y'all coming we got to throw the little sponsors out there yes, coffin and body wholeness uh 5248 of rice town road suite two baltimore maryland 212 215-443-808-0440, Africa's, you know who you are, my girl, I'm sending people to her, I still got gift cards left, if anybody wants some gift cards, so y'all go to Africa's and get your hook up, you know, get you body tight, and get it right, shirts and skins, I still have shirts and skins program, basketball game, basketball team for Brian, Oh shit, Brian O'Shane, if you're interested in getting your son or your daughter into that program, please let me know. He also sell houses. He's a real estate agent. But it's dream houses. I'm talking about that like little Kim type of house. You know what I'm talking about. Okay. Gotta have that change. And any kids, any kids in the basketball, shirts and skins. Yeah, shirts and skins. You, you know. Yeah. I might need to highlight them. What we doing with the youth? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Network with each other. Uh, what else we got? The hall. The hall. Um, we also have a hall that's on Security Boulevard that we are responsible for. Um, please let us know if you're interested in the hall or you know putting deposits $150 on. We fumbled deposit $350 for six hours. Can't so forget. please uh let me know. That's a great I book home. So <laughs> that that's, that. that's why I asked the it? It's a lot of space. If anybody <laughs> know what I'm talking about, um up mm -hmm. security book mm -hmm. security book. Mm -hmm. Remember when um what's that? It was like called like a Texas buffet. Okay. Up security. Mm -hmm. Right, right at the end. Road? No, at security no, boulevard. Security Boulevard. That's, that's off the road. mall. Yeah, the mall. Okay. It's a little um buffet spot they used to have. Like where Vinnegan's was at? Cross from the market. Yeah, so it's in the mall. Market, in the mall yeah, parking lot. Okay. used to be Vinnegan. You know my first yeah. night was down the street. That's where, I, ooh, that's where I was living at last. And um, so I know a lot of stuff yeah. changed up there. It was Vinnegan's. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so it must have turned into something else. Yeah. yeah. My uh, stepfather runs it. So me and Otis is responsible for that's booking this nice spot. Well, we and need y'all. It's a lot of space. Yeah. Okay. No problem. 
with this uh, organization. But as I said, the men is reaching out. Mm-hmm. I'm going to try and bring all them together. Yeah, you know what I'm That's I'm a perfect start. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And we also have um, True South Magazine. I'm a brand ambassador for True South Magazine. Um, if anyone interested in putting in their bookings and their posters or advertising their business or book me cards, anything like that, I'm responsible for November issue. Let me know before it get closed out. Uh, everything will be in October the 15th. Okay. I like that. All right. I'm so proud. I love y'all. We closing out. We love y'all. All right, take care. I'm, I'm sending my brother. I'm working on sending my brother a message right uh, now because I really do believe in uh, the platform and yeah, definitely. helping the children and giving back. So, Absolutely. hey, brother, Absolutely. yeah, I definitely. Need you. We yeah. need you. They need you. Yeah. That's, our, That's, our future. Future. That's our future. Uh, Redemption play. Redemption play is also coming out one more time. I- October the 30th. Encore performance. Uh, on October, performance October, October the 30th, which mm. is on the Friday at 7 p.m. Okay. Um, please check it out. Uh, we will also post the links if you are interested in uh, purchasing tickets. Okay. It is a great, uh, just an awesome play. And it deals with a lot of stuff that happens in the city and not even in Baltimore, but in any city you go to. So it, it's just a, a it's a major eye opener. Mm. Let um, me know if y'all need somebody in the cast. <laughs> also, we um we have uh my daughter Anita Gibson. She sells lip glosses and eyelashes. Okay. Um, let me know if anyone needs some. She's looking to uh, do a wholesale. Okay. So inbox me and I'll get it to her. Her page will be up shortly for that. And and that's, that's pretty it. much it. Yep. All right, we say bye. Peace out. We get to each other. <laughs> This is Anika Hop. Anika tells all with my co-host Otis. Otis, aka the co-host. Our special guest, real the comedian. Who for thought?